I believe we are as prepared as we can be. Once our troops are rested and in position, we'll begin the battle. We can defend if the enemy attacks, but for now, await further orders. You are dismissed. Uh, you can take as many actions as you like during your turn. Once you have done everything you want to do, click the end turn button. This. Turn indicator will switch to the enemy, and he will be able to perform any of the same actions you can. All right. Uh, let's hit the end turn button, see what happens. Uh, Germans do not sleep or stand idle as the month passes. They go about their business of war just as we do. Uh, the enemy AI has the same available actions as you do. It will move troops, purchase supplies, plan attacks, and research new tech. Your ability to see what the AI player is doing will depend on how you have used espionage missions. For the most part, you will be able to see that the AI is doing something, but not what. Okay. Our spies caught enemy spies attempting to gain army intel. Uh, similar to the player, the AI will use espionage abilities on the return, so remember to use counterintelligence on your staging grounds and important targets to deprive the AI of extra knowledge. Uh, enemy spy captured here. Hey. One thing I've learned is that any increase in spy activity usually means the enemy is probing for a good reason. Our officers knew this too and were pre prepping for an attack. Uh, just like the human player, the AI will probe with espionage to see where they you are weak. And use this as an indication of where an attack will happen. So we should probably expect an attack somewhere around here. Um, we can click on... Maybe in the uh, full campaign, you can see what they have. Uh, can't really count the poker chips this far out, but it looks like we're uh, roughly evenly matched. <clears throat> we're under attack. Oh boy, the AI can attack your territories on its turn, which will put you on the defensive. Each front, the line between the hexes, will use a different map. Okay, so we are. Let's see what we have here. Knowing what forces you and the enemy have before the battle is key to planning an effective attack or defense. While you are always able to see each side total morale and what you're bringing into the battle, you will only be able to see exactly what the enemy is bringing in if you have active army and intel espionage missions active in the enemy region. Okay, so this is us. Uh, we can't do anything here, apparently. Our recon teams were efficient. Between the ground scouts and aerial recon, we had at least some idea of what the Germans could throw at us. Without dedicated spies, however, we could only get numbers, not details. They could have conscripts, or they could be stormtroopers. We could not know when the flames begin to flow. Deployment pane will show you a great deal of information. That's this right here. About the upcoming battle, including the region, who is the attacker, and special modifiers. Uh, one of the most important things in the is the available supply, which is broken down into core supply and your supply draw. So core supply would be 1,400. Uh, maximum supply draw would be 600, and the total is 2,000. Uh, remember that without supply depot in the region, your supplies will draw. Draw will be zero. The army had an entire strategy and logistics team to tell us the likely outcome of the battle before it happened based on their current intel. One thing that team could never quantify, though, was the human spirit. A good leader could defy the odds and win the day. Uh, the auto-resolve likely outcome shows you the range of win levels your battle will fall into if you auto-resolve the battle. 
Uh, that's this. I guess if we auto-resolve it, it'll be a stalemate. Uh, the more even a battle is, the better it is to fight the battle directly, so your skill and good decisions play more of a part in the battle than chance. This is it. We will meet them on the battlefield. They will not take this ground. The attacker must pay a supply cost to initiate a battle. Well, defense is free. The attacker always has the option to cancel an attack before it begins. The defender can concede a battle, taking the loss without casualty. I'll click Engage Battle button to start the battle. Okay, this is uh, Rathel to Chateau Thierry. A 1918. Uh, one of the French towns to receive the Legion d'Honneur, Chateau Thierry, has seen its share of battles in both the Napoleonic Wars and World War I. Uh, they have nine corps available. I think we have more than that. You. Welcome to the front lines. I am Adjunct Chef Chief Garnier. Wild Bill. Lieutenant Colonel Laurent has spoken highly of you, Americans, and your ability to get things done. Some of them. All battles begin in the pre battle phase, which allows you to set up your trench lines and initial troop placements before starting the actual battle. The map is divided into three sectors. Each faction has their home territory. <coughs> Sorry about that. Their home territory where they can build and deploy. Between them is no man's land where nothing can be. All right, let's take a look here. So this is our territory here. Well, it looks like we've got barbed wire trenches, we've got a machine gun post, this field mortar, uh, machine gun post up here, this is a uh, winch truck. Uh, from what I understand, the use of balloons is very important to give you a, a good sense of what is across no man's land on the battlefield. So this is the uh, pre-battle and a deployment phase. Feel free to look around and get your bearings. Battle will soon be upon us, so get familiar with the territory. It will be beneficial to you. Uh, the camera controls on the battlefield are the same as they are for the theater map. In addition, you can click on the mini-map in the upper right-hand corner to quickly jump to any part of the battlefield. Alright, so there's enemy positions here. I think that's their command post right there. And here's our command post with our positions here. Uh, we've got artillery. Uh, we've got more machine guns here. There are already some trenches in place when we arrived. You can tell some of them have been there longer than others by how well they were built. Some were dirt walls, barely held in place by planks, while others had wood walls and concrete reinforcements. And this is what I was talking about, the persistence of trenches and uh, battlefield damage. Uh, on your first time fighting in a specific location, the battle will begin with a few pre-placed trenches. You're free to use them or replace them as you see fit. Any trench you build will remain in place in all future battles in that location unless they are destroyed or you lose control of All right, basic firing trench. Improved firing trench. And it looks like each one of these has a uh, cost that'll come out of this here. Uh, blockhouse trench cannot be destroyed by siege artillery. Uh, comm trench, units moving through a communication trench gain a large bonus to movement speed. Cannot be garrisoned. Light tanks can cross this type of trench. Right, so there's different types of trenches you can build, each with its own cost. Uh, group deployment down here, trenches, uh, support structures, our artillery. 
if you notice on the mini map when you hover over these, uh, it moves you to where they are. Like these two are both in this section, facing different directions, and it gives kind of a whitish outline of range, maybe. Right. Also, information about the uh, particular weapon down in the right-hand corner there. Uh, looking around, the soldiers were digging in, digging even more trenches attached to earlier ones we saw. Artillery cannons were being wheeled in along the carts full of am ammunition. Everywhere preparations were being made, the tons of earth was being moved. <coughs> <coughs> Objects such as weapons and placements, artillery batteries, observation balloons, and barbed wire do not persist between battles and will need to be built in need to be rebuilt each time. We have automatically added a few for this battle to save some time. Our aerial recon patrols and spies have been working to bring us information on the German lines. We can't completely rely on that information, however, as we as delivery delays can make their observations stale. Uh, just like the player, the enemy trenches also persist between battles and can be updated during the pre battle phase. This means that your knowledge of the enemy lines from battle to battle can become outdated. Using scouts or observation balloons to view the enemy lines can reduce casualty. A good trench layout serves two purposes, although not always at the same time. First, it provides a staging ground for assaults on the enemy lines. Second, it provides a defensive position to protect our key positions and personnel. Uh, control points are a primary focus of the battle, goal being to secure as many as possible. So we have three, well, two control points. Looks like plus uh, our command post here. Now we can't move. So. Uh, talking with the French veterans, we learned the most important lesson. Be in a trench as much as possible, whether it our own or the enemy's. You could use their own trench lines against them to assault their key positions while being safe from their bullets. Control points have a capture radius you can view by hovering mouse over it. Not. Only infantry can capture a control point, but the infantry can be in or out of a trench when doing so. We are standing in the command trench. The nerve center of the operation on this part of the front, as such, it is a key position that must be protected at all costs. Uh, command trenches are special control points that can only be captured by entering the trench itself. It's being near it will have no effect. Right? Good to know. Man Trench was a busy place. Messengers constantly ran in and out, orders were being given and received, and maps were studied and decisions were made. Losing this place to the enemy would indeed be a huge blow to the battlefield. Infantry assigned to the Command Trench are completely immune to damage from the outside. In addition, the Command Trench is immune to siege artillery. However, infantry stationed inside cannot fire at targets outside the trench. Your first assignment will be to aid in shoring up our damaged defenses. The right flank by position A took some damage in the last battle. I need your men to repair and reinforce there. Uh, building and deploying troops requires supply. Total supply you have in battle is determined by the number of units and the supply depot level in the region on the world map. 25% of your total available supply is reserved for when the battle starts, so you always have some supply for artillery and fire, artillery fire and reinforcements. Our engineers have categorized things for you so that you know what's available for your use. We have multiple types of trenches that serve different purposes. Familiarize yourself with them. In the trench tab, which is down here. We already did that. Uh... Concrete reinforced trench that can hold two companies grants targeting immunity. So it looks like you can put two two companies in each trench, no matter what it is.
Trenches protect your infantry from harm and allow them to move around the battlefield and relatives. Firing trenches allow our infantry to fire at oncoming enemies while remaining safe. Our engineers have ranked trenches based on their protection value and material cost. Uh, firing trenches have three types, basic, improved, and advanced. All of them provide uh, immunity to rifle fire and limited protection from artillery shells. The better the trench, the more protection it offers. Click on the improved trench like it tells us to. Once you have chosen what type of trench to build and the location, the engineers will dig it out for you. This will, of course, require a portion of supply. Uh, by clicking on the trench button, you enter placement mode. You can place a trench in any valid location. Uh, the trench image will turn red when you can't. Use the mouse wheel to rotate. Build an improved trench. I guess I can only build it here. Uh, so I'm gonna stick it right here. Go. Build another improved trench. Let me move. I guess we're gonna. Here. E. Here. Go. I guess you can't overlap and link them up. No. Building lines of trenches allow for greater protection. Uh, I should have put it facing. Probably not. This will just give us a line of fire ever protection if A here. <coughs> you can upgrade previously placed trenches by placing a higher level version on top of the existing one. Okay. Upgrading costs less supply than building the higher level trench from scratch. And I downgrade the trench, but move it by clicking uh, the X button for the trench. Right here. Move trench. What that is. Help me. Well, protection is a primary goal of trenches, so is movement. Communication trenches allow our men to swiftly travel between the primary firing trench lines and where get to where they needed. Uh, communication trenches are used to connect lines as firing trench. Maybe they wanted me to build a trench here. Three cannot stop Tom Trench and they offer my protection. Like the Tom Trench. Communication trench leading to nowhere is a waste of manpower and supply. Uh, the best use of communication trenches is to connect two lines of firing trench. Place a comm trench in one end, and one end is connected to nothing is likely. wonder if they wanted me to build a trench here. What this is? Put it here. Then we can put this here. Oh. Uh, blockhouse trenches or bunkers are heavily fortified trenches used to house reserve troops. They're impervious to just about anything, including seizure tilt. Blockhouse trenches can hold up to five inter infantry companies and make them immune to all incoming damage and invisible to the enemy outside the bunker. Infantry station inside cannot fire out and can only be removed via melee combat. Use them to stage attacks or to take cover. Hardman. Trenches are not the only thing our engineers can provide. Support structures allow specialized troops to provide defense, information, long-range cover for our infantry. 
Uh, while trenches persist and form the backbone of a good layout, support structures need to be placed every battle. Okay. Support structures. Gun emplacements include machine gun nest and mortar position. Well-placed weapon of this kind can keep multiple companies of enemies, enemy infantry at bay. There are two types of weapon in place. Machine guns are deadly against enemy, especially if they overlap to create a kill zone. Kind of looks like they already did up in this area here. Uh, click the MG nest button. What are all these other things? Field mortar, uh, reinforced mortar nest, barbed wire, uh, heavy field artillery, uh, light field artillery, and observation balloon. Remember to check your arc of fire when placing emplacements on the lines. A badly aimed machine gun might as well be another rock on the field. Weapons and placements must be attached to the trench line. They cannot be placed on open ground. In addition, machine gun nests have an arc of fire visible when you place them. You cannot shoot anything outside that arc. Make a mistake, click the X button to remove it. Build three of them. Right? Wish I could zoom out. Really do. I could go up. Rotate it. But this will give... If I put it here, it'll give a good line of fire up through this barbed wire there. Uh, that looks like a good place. Like a good place. I mean, I can't really do anything because I can't move the map. I also put one down here. If they get through this, I can fire on them coming through here. But just for the sake of moving this along, I'm going to put uh, you here. I'll build one here. And I'll put one there. Our engineers can reinforce your weapons and placements need, so it will dig more heavily into our supply. So that's field mortar and uh, reinforced mortar nest. Both machine guns and mortars have two versions, standard and reinforced. Reinforced versions have a much higher health pool and are more resistant to artillery and grenade fire. Comes at a higher supply cost. <clears throat> what we once strung up around our farms is now used as weapons of war, a highly effective one. You want the enemy to stay in the sight of your machine guns for a longer time. What better way than to tangle them up in a nest of fire? Uh, it slows the infantry down that passes through it to a crawl. Time to fire at them. I think everyone knows the uh, gist of what barbed wire is and what it does. Uh, it can be destroyed by artillery fire, bombs, and crushed by your tanks. I used to see barbed wire all over the place back home. Used always a neat line of fencing through. Not these dangerous looking coils. Stuff was everywhere, forming a maze of death just past the line. Razor wire is more deadly cousin to barbed wire. Razor wire acts exactly the same way as barbed wire, but additional damage... Additionally, damages enemies that pass through it. Observation balloons are a vital source of intel for trench lines. Our observers can rise above the landscape and radio down to the ground crew about what he sees. With this information, we can better see enemy troop movements and trench layout. Uh, observation balloons are special objects that can be raised to reveal a large area in the fog of war, allowing you to track enemy movements. Raised balloons are vulnerable, vulnerable to aircraft, while lower balloons and their support trucks can be attacked from the ground. Click the OBS balloon support tab. Where you set up your balloon will determine how much of the battlefield you can see. As vulnerable as they are, keeping them to the rear will be for usefulness. 
Uh, balloons can reveal a large portion of the map, but it isn't infinite. They have low health. Placing them at the rear of your lines means that you will reveal mostly your own stuff. Uh, use a petition, a position that can be protected while pushing as far into enemy as possible. Really wish you would. Uh, he's right in the line of fire there. T. Can't put him here. You put him here. Why not? Our command structure on the front line is by word of mouth and messenger travels outside the command trench. As such, we are only capable of tracking and coordinating a finite number of companies. Man cap, which is this down here, uh, let's read it, max amount of companies you can field on the map at one time. Uh, how many units you can place onto the battlefield at one time. In the campaign, this number is 30, though it can change in other game mode. Weapons and placements... Boons and aircraft do not reduce command cap infantry, tanks, and artillery do. We track all of the companies currently deployed, better handle their efforts. The unit uses command cap, it appears in the unit tray at the bottom center of the screen, I guess like this. Each company is represented by a portrait. While our artillery batteries are not mobile companies, they do require specialized men to fire them, and as such are part of the command system. Artillery is a special unit, while a mobile can use multiple abilities to fire across much of the battlefield. Uh... Right. Heavy artillery is primarily used to cause damage. All of the various shells they can use are designed to destroy. This is best used defense. In some cases, a more offensive called for. Uh, heavy artillery has three abilities. Precision barrage for default damage. Poison gas. Yeah, that can be fun. Shells are for area denial and airburst shells that can damage targets even in trenches. First ability available by default, while the later two must be unlocked via the factory. Heavy artillery. While not as large as the siege cannons I have seen, the heavy artillery lived up to its name. I'd heard about the different shell types. While I did not see any poison gas shells, I was told they existed. I'd heard stories about Epers and did not want to experience it. Uh, like machine guns, artillery batteries have an arc of fire. Placing them, you can see on the mini-map where the cannon can reach. The area is large. They can usually be placed in mid to rear of your lines. As with trenches, you can use mouse wheel to rotate the battery when placing. Right? Well. Put it right here. Right in front of the command train. It's like it's got a good line of sight on the whole battlefield. There it goes. Uh, the French teams had their artillery placements down to a science. It's another heavy artillery. I admired their ability to aim and calculate trajectories on the floor. It was all a bit too much for math for me. Uh, artillery abilities have a cooldown. Using an ability on a battery locks down all abilities for that battery until the cooldown expires. I wonder how long the cooldown is. Because of this, having multiple batteries is useful so that you can always have at least one ready to fire. Now that our stationary defenses are in place, it's time to fill our trench lines with men ready to defend our country. Group deployment tab allows you to place infantry and tanks onto the battlefield. Reforms the backbone of any successful defense. Right. 
We don't want our men milling about outside the trenches when the firing starts. All infantry will be stationed on the firing steps to make sure our defense is covered. Uh, then we have French infantry. French Raider, a special infantry company, uses grenades. Faster and more protected than standard infantry. Oh, flamethrower. Nice. American infantry. Raider. Uh, light tank. Light tank. Light tank with a machine gun. Light tank with a cannon. Uh, infantry companies cost less supply and deploy in pre-battle. They must be placed in the trenches. Additional... In addition, infantry placed during pre-battle may be subject to siege artillery barrages before the battle starts. Cheaper cost and starting advantage must be weighed against. Having talked with soldiers from multiple countries now, it seemed to me that all of them had a knack for something cultural. The French were very efficient with supply since they were fighting in their own country. Her boys took Tanks like ducks, water. British were crack shots. <clears throat> For the Allied faction, infantry companies have a nationality bonus. Talked about up there. Uh, you can see this modifier by selecting a company and viewing the info pane on the tool. Here it is, down at the bottom of the box. I suspect that the same could not be said for the Germans. They were, for the most part, all from the same country. Possible that they had other advantages I just didn't know about since I don't speak German and they didn't seem inclined to talk. My German soldiers do not have nationality. And the American infantry. Oh. Fellow Americans are, I am sure, ready to get to work. Get them into the trenches. Uh, in the pre-battle phase, infantry can only be placed into trenches. Uh, as the, with other objects, clicking the infantry button enters placement. Put the Americans into French. Reporting for duty. Oh, place seven more American infantry in trenches. Reinforcements reporting. Reinforcements ready. We've arrived and await orders. Can't move. Yes. Looks like we're late to the party. Up here. Reporting for duty. Go. Infantry companies are generally all purpose. They can attack, defend, or capture. However, it is sometimes necessary to bring in specialists for some jobs. This. Be a American Raider. Two American Raiders. Reporting for duty. Reinforcements reporting. Yo. I believe our lines are sufficiently manned for now. Most of them are empty, but say so. Doc. We will hold back the rest of our men as reinforcements so that we can react once the battle starts. Uh, we'll also hold back our tanks. Let them be a surprise for the Germans. Uh, as with infantry, tanks cost less to place in the free battle phase. Unlike infantry, tanks can be placed in territory. Our siege artillery batteries have been moved to the battlefield. Cover another portion of the front. Have to do without... Uh, Pre-battle bombardment is available if you have seizure to region. It is useful to clear enemy trenches to support your attack. Potentially destroy the trenches themselves. Because of the high cost and randomness of fire, it is best used when you are the attacker and are planning to make a massive assault. Seizure to I believe we are as ready as we'll ever be. Get some rest. You earned it. Stay vigilant. Uh, how you spend your supply in pre-battle is a key element of the game. 
Any supply you do not spend in pre-battle will be added to the reserve once the battle starts. You must balance the need to have more defenses built in pre-battle versus the need for reinforcements, artillery, aircraft, and other battle. Waiting was hell. Nothing to do, your mind can take you to dark places. While our intel people mostly got it right, sometimes the only clue we had battle was about to start was the sudden si silence of the artillery. Uh, clicking the begin battle will transition to the battle phase. All placed objects are constructed following the by pre-battle bombardments. So I guess pre-battle bombardment is something just sort of automatically happens, kind of like off-map type of thing in the battle. Aviation is fine, fine as a sport, but it. Okay. We received warning that the Germans will likely attack soon, and into position. Uh, during the transition to the tactical battle phase, all the objects you placed are built, and the troops you deployed will man trenches. Normally, the battle clock will begin counting down, but we. Have Paused it for the tutorial. Automatically do so even when gameplay is resumed to give you time to react, read, and react. Now you could tell how much experience a soldier had by how they handled waiting. Sometimes our intel was to the hour, other times only knew the battle started because the bombardment stopped. Either way, we kept busy in the trenches waiting for the whistle to sound. Uh, transition phase includes any days of siege bombardment that were purchased in battle from players. Bombardments a chance to destroy pre-placed trenches and the men inside them. Strategists use the information they have to try to determine how well the battle will go. Before we even start, we use this info to plan the best course of action. That's the potential box up here. Uh, so... A longer bar indicates more available firepower than the like we are the weaker than <clears throat> any other factors play into winning a battle skill at giving orders technological advances in morale all full knowing when to stop fighting is something as important as forward top bar is the victory bar represents a range of potential victory levels from great loss to great victory. The pointer will adjust based on scores earned by both sides in their relation to each other. Okay, that's this up. Strategists were men who poured over stacks of papers, maps, radio transcripts, and pictures all taken from planes. They somehow took all of that and told us if we were likely to win or lose. Somehow it felt like they forgot the most important part, the human will to survive. Very dramatic. Uh, control point shortcuts. Near the top meters, you can find the current control point status. You can see who owns each point and if they are in the process of being captured. Click on the icons. Focus the camera on a control point. Control point A. From multiple locations in our territory that have been designed as important tactical locations. Locations must be protected at all cost. Our enemy has similar locations that should be captured where possible to reduce their capability to fight. Every control point has a meter around the outside. Anyone familiar with uh, basically a whole lot of different type of capture Flag or game first person shooters knows what that like. At first, we couldn't quite tell what the what was so important about the seemingly random pieces of ground. Our allies told us that in most cases they secured points of reinforcement, allowing us to bring new men and weapons uh, into the area quickly. So, if you capture control points, uh. 
capture control points, you can bring reinforcements in on those controls, I believe. Uh, control point locations are used as a way to coordinate reinforcements. Yep. Uh, each control point influences an area of the map and reinforcement locations. Our reinforcements wait at key positions away from the battlefield. Uh, we have mapped specific routes into the area via the control points. Losing the control points also prevent us from using those reinforcement routes. Capture an enemy control point that links to side reinforcement points. Where is these reinforcement? I see up here. All right, so these got have to be the reinforcement uh, symbols here. Your men are needed on the field now. Prepare to deploy. Uh, supply cost of reinforcements is higher and deploying the same unit in pre-battle. Reinforcements are limited by the number of, of available based on what's in the region. Availability of supply and command cap. Flip the American infantry button. Your men are needed to reinforce around control point B. Okay. Once you click the button for a unit, you can click the ground set the designation the destination and like pre-battle units can be told to reinforce onto open ground or into a trench your unit will spawn at the available post point closest to the destination as shown by the arrow and move there left click place two more american infantry reinforcements reporting go Reinforcements are on the way. Make sure that they have, are properly behind defenses when they arrive. Commands such as reinforcement, movement, and uh, ability usage can still be given. Well, pause, but nothing will happen. The play is resumed. Sometimes it is wise to step back, pause, and take a look at the battlefield. However, right now, time is of the essence. You can control the game speed here up here. Click the play button and watch your troops arrive. Our infantry will route from the closest mustering point and march to the location you requested. Watch your guys enter the map before. Okay. They are. How long do I have to watch them? Yes, we can't. We have new orders. You have to go to B, right? Uh, infantry companies default uh, to column formation when it's called in. This is fast but vulnerable. Skirmish formation is defensive but slower to move. You can toggle between using the formation buttons, which is here. Tell them to halt or withdraw. Information is one of the most vital aspects of war. We cannot shoot what we cannot see. We cannot plan for an invisible enemy attack. <clears> okay. <throat> Gun okay. placements can see across. Uh, click to raise and lower the balloon so we can see. Look at my balloon. Put it. Raise the blue. Oh, there he goes. Single soldier in a basket hanging from a giant bag filled with flammable gas. Those recon soldiers they have nerves of steel. Uh, watch your vision increase when the balloon finishes or continuing. Okay. Now we can see where the enemies are. Uh, they've got artillery, infantry. Looks like they've got a gun nest. This is one of their command uh, points or control points 
Here's our timing has paid off. The observers in the balloons have spotted enemy troops. Remember, the heavy artillery is good for damaging enemy targets since units cannot regain lost health. Uh, select heavy artillery. Préparez-vous, soldats. Heavy and light artillery have very different uses and available shells, which is over here. A precision barrage, gas attack, air burst. Okay. I'm giving orders to your artillery batteries. It is important to remember to lead moving targets. It takes time. Uh, select an ability. Move the reticle, reticle over some German infantry and left click to fire. So you have to be afraid over them. On a nos cibles. We have targets. No one who says they do not fear artillery fire is lying or insane. Here we go. Our artillery is raining down on the Germans. Oh, you can really zoom in here. sound of the shells cutting through the air, the force of the blast pushing at your flesh, the dirt and other things flying through the air, it's terrible. Uh, the ability will place a brief warning decal on the ground before it a shell lands. Artillery fire is not exact, so shots will land randomly within the area. Artillery shells can cause friendly fire. So you, can, or, you can shell your own troops. Good to know. Any of our veteran soldiers can tell where artillery shells will land just by the sound. Watch the incoming ar enemy artillery. They're hitting us more than we hit them. Here's these guys still. Uh, select a damaged low morale infantry. Stand by for orders. Why to pay close attention to the morale of your men? Men with high morale will willingly go over the top and rush a German machine gun nest. Those with low morale are likely to break and run at the first sign, sound of rifle fire. Uh, low morale units do not suffer from damage reduction. Still follow orders, but their usefulness is limited. Click the withdraw button. We're withdrawing! And then away he goes. Watch the infantry withdraw. It's always better to see a wounded friend pull back than to lose them on the battlefield forever. Wounds heal, morale can be refreshed with a little rest after a brief recovery period. They could fight again and learn from experience. Uh, withdrawing is not instantaneous. Keep your eyes peeled for an enemy attack. Oh, they're moving. It looks like they are moving troops towards location Z. This likely means they are planning an assault on our right flank around location A. Normally enemy units hide in trenches, can't be seen moving unless you have infantry near their trench line. I believe we'll need some specialized troops to handle the incoming attack on location A. I'll select a raider via clicking on unit tray to select and flip. There's the raider right there. Okay. New orders incoming. Raiders are an excellent choice. They are very good at clearing trenches, though they need backup to get there. Let's get them into position. Uh, right click on an open trench slot to move the raiders. Take the trench. Watch the troops.
Incoming rolling barrage. Rolling barrages fire several lines of artillery in a set order. These shells are not, not only damage and suppress everything along the path, but also drop smoke. You can use this both damage the enemy and give your infantry cover if they follow behind the aggressive shelling. There, do you see that? The Germans are going over the top. Prepare defenses. The term over the top refers to the act of leaving the trenches to attack the enemy. Our emplacements are in positioned admirably. The Germans will pay a heavy cost to approach our trench, trench line. Artillery is very useful. But the shells are expensive to produce and transport. You must weigh the cost of firing versus the effectiveness of the shots you plan. Depending on the size of the enemy attack, you need to decide if your units can stop the attack before it arrives or if you need to support the defensive lines with artillery. We're given the order and we climbed into the firing step and readied our rifles. The lingering dust and smoke from the artillery barrages, we could make out the Germans running towards us. Machine guns open fire, and we soon join them. Uh, firing trenches have two positions. The firing step on the left. So you can see them when they, uh, one up front, one in the rear. Uh, you can use the swap trench position button to swap companies between the positions is useful for example you want your more damaged specialist infantry to take the step when enemies enter close range ready yourselves uh these guys wanted wanted me to go put you On up here line. attention put you Take firing position. Uh, well, let's swap out. Swap them. Uh, defeat the incoming attack wave along the line. Open fire. Repel the attack. All right. We're getting attacked by the Germans. Recharger. I'm assuming we're going to open fire when... Uh, pause here. Pause. Pause, pause. Artillery. All right, we're opening fire on them. I want... Oh, we can do this, all right. Préparez-vous à recevoir les ordres de tir. Préparez-vous pour le barrage. Feu! Hit that. Hit them with a barrage. This is the cooldown timer down here. All right. Charger l'artillerie. Recharger pour un barrage de zone. Pilonner cette position. Hit them with a the barrage. Incoming assault is larger than anticipated. I believe it's time to field some of our tanks. Uh, reinforce two French tanks. Watch the tanks enter the map before continuing. I don't want to like, keep shooting at these guys. Oh, here comes our tanks. Uh, tank provides a morale bonus, and our guys loved it. Meanwhile, it's interfering with my uh, my use of artillery that I want to do. Get those tanks into position and stop the incoming attack. On attend de nouveaux ordres. En route. Restez en position. Where's the incoming attack coming? We're here. Get you out front. Where are you going? Going the wrong way. 
Dirigez-vous vers cette position. Who is he? I think I just fucked this up pretty bad. Let's have him just come up here. Oh, he's going around. All right, I see what's happening here. Oh, I'm not going to wait around for the tanks. Préparez-vous, soldats. Vérifiez les coordonnées pour le barrage. Commencez le barrage. Well, they stopped. Would probably be wise to get on the radio to command and have them scramble some aircraft. Air support. Uh, like the tanks, each nation seemed to have their own ideas about planes. Available air support shows how many aircraft are available to be sent on a mission. Uh, the press would radio to the airfield and request a mission. Once in the air, there were no way for the pilot to receive new orders, so he had to do his best. Uh, click air superiority mission. And you have... Balloon busting, bombing, or harassment. Air superiority. Click near near A to call in your air superiority mission. Okay. I'm still trying to launch artillery here. Uh, survive the final attack wave. happening. Play. Did it lock up on me? Tout ce qui vole dans le ciel est une cible. I don't understand what's happening here. Let me play. Uh, survive the final attack. Well, this is interesting. We have new orders. Fire at will. About letting me On do something. De On y va. Okay. Hang on. Alright, so for some reason the game locked up on me and wouldn't let me do anything. Uh, I couldn't finish the battle, so... Uh, I think that's enough to give you an idea of... Um, what you need to do in a defensive battle. It looked like the machine guns were doing a pretty good job of uh, holding back a lot of the... Uh, a lot of the offensive. Um, unfortunately, I didn't really get a chance to see how well those tanks did. Um... But we are going to uh, pick this up again uh, with part five, which is hard choices in research. Uh, and then we're going to go into offensive battles, cost of battle, and uh, continuing the war. I think we actually get um, a couple turns in the campaign, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that's what I've heard anyway, but we're going to pick that up in the uh, next part of our playthrough. Uh, if you like this, hit the like button. If you have any uh, thoughts or tips or advice or whatever, put those in the uh, comment section below. This is uh, available at the end of March. It's uh, going to be released then, but you can pre-purchase it. I will put a link to uh, the game Steam page down in the description below. Uh, if you want to follow along as this game is released and makes its appearance on my channel, hit the subscribe. Uh, and we'll see you for part five of the uh, tutorial. J76NY saying thank you very much for watching and have yourself a very good day.